Today we will be talking about how the option Greek delta actually changes over time. With everything in options trading, nothing is static, and the option Greeks actually change as time passes and as a respective option gets closer to its expiration date. So there are multiple levels to learning about the option Greeks. The first level is learning the basic definitions, and in the case of delta, an options delta is the estimated option price change relative to a $1 change in the stock price. So if we have a call option with a delta of 0.65, that means that if the stock price increases by $1, the option is expected to gain 65 cents in value. And if the stock price falls by $1, the option is expected to lose 65 cents of value. But this 65 delta call option is actually not going to remain a 0.65 delta call option as time passes. The delta, or the sensitivity of that option's price relative to changes in the underlying price, is actually going to change over time. Now I really hope I can make it through this video today because this is the third time I'm recording this video. The first time I was in Miami last week and I did not like how the video came out because I did not have all my travel equipment with me, so that was a learning lesson. The second time I recorded it was just the other day and I had eaten a bunch of cherries before recording and I did not check my teeth before recording and when I went to go edit the video, I noticed that my teeth were dark red, so I scrapped the whole video. So today, third time's the charm, we're gonna make it through. So let's get started. First off, to recap what an options delta is, an options delta is the options expected price change relative to a $1 change in the stock price. So if we have a call option with a delta of 0.65, that means that the stock price increases by $1, that call option is expected to gain 65 cents of value. On the other hand, if the stock price falls by $1, that call option is expected to lose 65 cents of value. So first I wanna introduce three things to keep in mind in regards to option deltas and how they change over time. And then we are going to explore intuitively why that might be and try to make more sense of it as opposed to just memorizing things. And on this channel, you know I like to explain things in depth, so that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing I wanna to introduce to you is that an in the money option will see its delta approach positive or negative 1.0 as time passes, assuming that the option remains in the money. So for example, if you buy a call option with a delta of 0.65 and that option is in the money, meaning that the stock price is above the call option strike price, then as time passes, and let's say this call option has 30 days to expiration when we buy it, over the course of the next 30 days, that 0.65 delta call option is going to become a 1.0 delta call option. Now, what this means is that if it remains in the money through those 30 days to expiration and at expiration it is still in the money, then the delta of that call option will be a positive 1.0. And that will mean that if the stock price goes up by a dollar, the option will gain $1 in value, and if the stock price falls by $1, the option will lose $1 of value. Now note that is that is much more sensitive than the initial delta of 0.65, because with an initial delta of 0.65, if the stock price goes up by $1, the option gains 65 cents, but now, as time has passed and the option is still in the money, the delta has increased to a positive 1.0, and that means it is now gaining or losing $1 for each $1 change in the stock price. So concept number one is that in the money options, we'll see their deltas approach positive or negative 1.0, depending on if it's a call or put, as expiration approaches. So we can simulate this by looking at options on the same stock and just comparing the same exact strike option in two different expiration cycles. So in these images that I'm going to pull up, we are looking at options on the E-mini S&P 500 futures. So we're looking at futures options here. Doesn't matter what product we're looking at, the concept will hold true no matter what we are looking at. So in this image, we can see that the futures contract price is 42.15, and we are looking at the 4,200 calls in two different expiration cycles. So in the 92-day expiration cycle, we can see that the 4200 call has a delta of 0.53. Now, if we look at the 4200 call that has one day to expiration, we can see that that call option has a delta of 0.79. So from the 
92 day expiration to the one day expiration, we can see that the same 4200 call has a much different delta value. So with 92 days to go, it has a delta of 0.53. And with one day to go, it has a delta of 0.79. So you can imagine a scenario where we buy that 4200 call with 92 days to go. And then 91 days later, if the futures price is exactly the same, that call options delta has actually increased from 0.53 to 0.79 in this particular example. And at the time of expiration, the delta will be a positive 1.0. So why is this important to you as an options trader? Well, you need to know that everything is dynamic and things will change as time passes. If you own an in the money option in your portfolio, then you should know that as time passes and as expiration gets closer and closer, the delta of that in the money option is going to grow, meaning that the options price change will be more sensitive to changes in the stock price and for you as a trader, that means that your P&L is going to have much larger swings as the delta of that option grows, assuming it is in the money and it is getting closer and closer to expiration. So let's go to the second concept that I want to introduce to you today, which is the complete opposite as the first concept that I just discussed. Now this is that out of the money options, we'll see their deltas approach zero as time passes and as expiration approaches. So for example, if you short a put option with 30 days to expiration, and that put option has an initial delta value of negative 0.25, and 29 days later, the stock price has not changed, well, now that delta of that put option is going to be much closer to zero. So from 30 days to expiration to one day to expiration, if the stock price has not changed, and that put option is still out of the money, then we know that that put option is going to have a delta very close to zero as opposed to the initial delta value of negative 0.25. So out of the money options, as time passes and assuming that they remain out of the money, those deltas are going to get less and less sensitive to changes in the stock price as out of the money option deltas approach zero the closer and closer they get to expiration. So I just wanna mention that these images here are from the Tastyworks trading platform. And if you've never heard of them before, I would highly suggest checking out the Tastyworks website to see if they are right for you as a brokerage platform. I've been trading with Tastyworks for years and I absolutely love their platform and they have some of the best options trading commissions out there. So right now Tastyworks is also doing a special promotion through September 30th, 2021, where if you open a brand new account as a first time account holder and you deposit money into that account, you are eligible for a free crypto bonus. So if you open and fund an account with $200, you will get $50 worth of crypto for free. And if you open and fund an account with $2,000 or more, you will get a $200 crypto bonus just for signing up and funding that account. So if you're in need of a brokerage account and you wanna take advantage of this free bonus that is available to you now through September 30th, 2021, then be sure to use the link down in the description below to get started. Just like we did for the in the money call options, we can actually simulate the decay of an out of the money options delta by looking at two similarly striked options in two different expiration cycles. So for these examples, we are going to look at Apple. So here the stock price of Apple is $131.79. And the first option we will look at is the 29 day 125 put. And we can see that that 125 put with 29 days to expiration has a delta of negative 0.19. If we fast forward and look at the one day expiration, we can see that the one day 125 put has a delta of negative 0.02. So this demonstrates that if you have an out of the money option, as time passes and assuming that the option remains out of the money, the delta of that option will slowly approach zero until finally we reach expiration. And if the option is out of the money at expiration, it will have a delta of zero and expire worthless. And lastly, when we look at at the money options, at the money options, we'll see their deltas remain fairly close to positive or negative 0.5 as time passes. But in the moments immediately before expiration, an option is either going to be in the money or out of the money, and therefore the previous rules will apply. If an at the money option or an option that has a strike price very close to the stock price 
is in the money leading into the final moments before expiration, its delta will slowly approach a positive or negative 1.0. And if the option is out of the money going into expiration, then its delta will slowly approach zero. So I keep saying positive or negative, and I just wanna clarify that when I say positive, I am referring to call options. And when I say negative, I am referring to put options as call options have positive deltas and uh, put options have negative deltas. So now that we've talked about how option deltas will change over time, Let's go ahead and have a little bit of a thought experiment and explore why this might be and try to understand this intuitively. Well, for me, the easiest way to understand it is that an options delta is sometimes referred to as the estimated probability of the option expiring in the money. So for example, if we have a call option with a delta of 0.35, that means the call option has an estimated 35% probability of expiring in the money. If we look at a put option with a delta of negative 0.67, then that put option has an estimated probability of 67% of expiring in the money. So based on that, we can start to understand delta as somewhat of a probability weighted number of shares at expiration. So what I mean by that is if we have an option that expires in the money, it will become a share position of 100 shares. So if I own a call option and it expires in the money, it will become 100 shares at the call strike price. If I own a put option and it is in the money and I hold it through expiration, then that put option is going to convert into a negative 100 share position, meaning I will short or sell 100 shares of stock at the put strike price if it is in the money and I hold it through expiration. So if we combine that concept with the probability of expiring in the money, then we can start to understand delta as what I mentioned before, which is a probability weighted number of shares at expiration. So if we have a call option with a delta of 0.35, and that suggests that the call option has a 35% chance of expiring in the money, that means that there's a estimated 35% chance that the call option will expire in the money and become 100 shares. So if we take a 35% probability of becoming 100 shares, then that gives us a probability weighted number of shares of 35 shares. And therefore that option is going to trade similarly to 35 shares of stock. And what that means is that if the call options delta is 0.35 and the stock price goes up by $1, then that option is going to gain 35 cents. But when we actually account for the option contract multiplier of 100, that 35 cent increase in the option price is actually going to result in a $35 change in the overall option value. So in other words, if I owned that call option with a delta of 0.35 and the stock price goes up by $1, my call option is going to increase by 35 cents, but for me, that is going to represent a profit of $35. And that's the same thing that I would experience if I owned 35 shares of stock. So if I own 35 shares of stock and the stock price goes up $1, I will make $35. If I own a call option with a delta of 0.35 and the stock price goes up $1, I'm going to make $35. How does this new concept that I've just introduced relate to the passage of time and how the delta of an option will change as time passes? For in the money options, the probability of expiring in the money will approach 100% if the option remains in the money and the option gets closer and closer to expiration. Because if an option is in the money with less and less time to expiration, naturally the probability of that option actually expiring in the money will grow towards 100%. And that will be represented by an option delta closer to positive 1.0 for call options and negative 1.0 for put options. On the other hand, if we look at out of the money options, as time passes and as an option remains out of the money, the likelihood that the option expires out of the money is going to increase. And if we invert that, the probability that it will expire in the money will decrease towards 0%. So we have an option that is out of the money and it has 30 days to expiration. 
but then we go to one day to expiration and the option is still out of the money. And let's say it's still out of the money by the same amount, meaning that the strike price is the same distance from the stock price. Then we understand that the option has a much lower probability of expiring in the money because 29 days have passed. We only have one day left before the option expires, but the option is still pretty decently out of the money. And therefore, the likelihood of it expiring in the money is going to be very close to 0%. In both of these cases, whether we're talking about in the money options as time passes and the probability of them expiring in the money approaching 100%, or if we're talking about an out of the money option where the probability of it expiring in the money is going to approach 0%, in both cases, it makes sense to think of it as the probability weighted number of shares that it will become at expiration. So if an option is getting very close to expiration and it has pretty much a 100% chance of expiring in the money and therefore becoming 100 shares of stock, then the option is going to start trading like 100 shares of stock, which will be represented by a delta close to positive 1.0 for calls and negative 1.0 for puts. On the other hand, if we're looking at out of the money options, as expiration gets closer and closer and the option is still out of the money, then it becomes very unlikely that the option will expire in the money. And if it expires out of the money, it will expire worthless and it will not become any shares of stock. So we could therefore say it will become zero shares of stock. And therefore, with that being the case, it will start to trade like zero shares of stock and not be very sensitive to changes in the stock price and that will be represented by a delta very close to zero. Be sure to check out that link down in the description below if you wanna learn more about the Tastyworks brokerage platform and you wanna take advantage of that special crypto bonus offer that they have going through September 30th, 2021. It's a pretty sweet deal, so be sure to check out that link in the description below to learn more details about that. If you have any questions related to this video or just wanna leave a comment, please do so down below as I would love to hear from you. In the next few videos, we will talk about how option gamma, theta, and vega all change with the passage of time, much like we did in this video. So be sure to stay tuned for those videos that will be coming out in the near future.